So here we go, it seems to be ready. So uh, let me try to understand how can I handle the mic. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, so today's session is going to be about PHP Storm tips and tricks. So basically I'll be live on and showing you, showing you some, some of the things uh, you can do with PHP Storm. And it seems that quite a lot of you already use it and there are always some small features and small things you don't really notice and some of those I don't notice as well. So it's really hard to know all the features and know all the tweaks. So we'll try to explore some of them at least. So I'll be using Native Framework and at the very first I would really say a big thank you and our appreciation from the JetPoint side to all the developers from our local communities involved in uh, plugins development for PHP Storm. Uh, because I know that probably some of them uh, is here. So there are three uh, plugins. That's Nata plugin, and uh, yeah, the one is Nata uh, Framework Helpers. So that's basically for code completion in Nata Framework. That's very useful one, I would say, for the objects and all the rest. Another one is uh, Neon support. That's Nata object notation, similar to YAM. So you know that much better than me. Uh, and there, the one is also uh, templating, that's Latte. So basically, if you want to work with Natty framework proficiently, you must install all the three plugins and they're really helpful, yeah, to get all, all the cool things like uh, highlighting in templates and configuration with Neon and all the rest, all the rest. So just, if you don't have them yet, just install. So uh, to begin with, sir, I'll show you a couple of my favorite productivity things. So the first one is, uh, if you're at some point lost in the ID, or if you'd like to explore some new feature, or you would like to find some file, class, or symbol, or I don't know, anything. So you just press double shift. Double shift to invokes the feature called Search everywhere, so that basically search for everything everywhere in the ID. So that's all the files, that's all the symbols, that's all the classes, uh, that's all the methods, and that's also all the all the features and actions in the ID. So if you want to do something with database, yeah, just we have classes, we have tool window, uh, we have setting settings here, all kind of settings. So you can just navigate to anything what you're interested in. That's for example if you don't remember some hotkey or whatever. And uh, if you would like to explore more what you don't yet use in the ID, there's a good thing called Productivity Guide. It's located in Help. That's a special, uh, special kind of dialogue which, which shows you uh, what you use and don't use in the ID currently. So for example, I used basic code completion two hours ago and I used camel prefixes seven months ago, but uh, I never used file structure for pop, for example. So uh, we have a notation here and a kind of a quick tips what you can do in order to use this feature. And uh, most of those have about some navigation and about uh, things which can really increase your productivity. So I, I would really encourage you uh, to look into this dialogue and understand what you use and don't use. And also that's a very good, good way to post uh, in front of your colleagues about how many are possible, possible bugs PHP Storm prevented and for, for how many typing errors or whatever it prevented you. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit about productivity. Uh, also about navigation. Um, I think one of the major things uh, for exploring code in PHP Storm which you should take advantage of is uh, uh, go, to, go to declaration. So we just open some um, some model here. So you have album repository. I just uh, uh, right now press command button on my Mac. It's control on Windows or Linux. So you just press command and uh, you can go to uh, to declarations. You can go to um, usages from here uh, and you just can hover all kind of symbols and all kind of classes and you will uh, see what kind of declaration you can open. We'll select this one. We just are instantly navigated to, uh, to the declaration. So it's really fast way to explore a new code base, for example, or a new module you're trying to use in your project. Uh, so the most basic uh, thing you can do in PHP Storm, uh, as well as other IT, is uh, code completion, which is basically, um, well, invoked with control space or invoked automatically, it depends on your settings. Uh, but one of the nice things is that code completion is basically uh, context-dependent. 
uh, because right here, when we provide this, it provides us the most relevant results on top. So that's really essential that he uh, provide the proper annotations for your code, for example, like phpdoc right here, because phpdoc helps serve the ID to, um, to make a proper type inference and to understand what kind of, what kind of uh, methods or variables are visible right here. And in some ways, ID also can help you. So for example, uh, if we remove construct here, uh, we can use code generation, code generation, which is command N or control N, and we can generate constructor for albums. And we got a, yeah, we got a constructor generated from your code uh, with proper PHP doc annotations, which will be also seen from the code, and which, will, which is like very, very convenient in many ways. Uh, so you can also uh, use different code generation for your methods. You can generate PHP docs, you can generate getters, setters, and all the rest. So that's, that's like the, the one you can do really fast. And uh, we also have a search action called quick fix that's alt temper, uh, which can be invoked uh, pretty everywhere. So, for example, here we can see on the right and on the right gutter actually, uh, there are all the errors, all the warnings in the ID shown. And uh, we found this one that's get form. Method get form is not found in class. So, uh, that might be either some problem with their visibility or there is no such method, but it's used. So we can press alt enter uh, and we can add this method for the class. So if that would be easily accessible, that would just add the method to the class. And we can also annotate it with uh, PHP docs from, uh, from these standard, uh, standard parameters. So if you provide parameters, then PHP docs can be automatically generated. Uh, so from here, I think that's uh, really good to go to uh, some refactorings which help you uh, to, code, to keep your code neat and dry and extract all this all the stuff you really don't need to be messy or whatever. So for example, uh, we go for this one, find all, and we press control T uh, and that's uh, a kind of universal dialog for all the refactorings in the ID and actually all their all kind of IDs from JetBrains. So from here you can see uh, all the refactorings you can from here. So this just one is rename. So we just find all new and we can, for example, preview to understand where find all is used and we can, and we can refactor it in any, in any place you're interested in to refactor that across your code base. So that's really a safe way of performing any kind of refactoring. You review first and then, and then you refactor that uh, with the help of PHP Storm. So from refactoring, sir, I think uh, we'll move a bit to debugging because debugging is basically one of uh, one of the major reasons to use the ID as well. Because otherwise, it would be really hard to do to do proper investigation of your code. So the easiest way to debug in PHP Storm is the workflow called zero configuration debugging, and uh, it implies that you already have your PHP environment configured. So in my in my case, I just use a mem. So it's like basic mem or lamp stack for for Mac. That's another one, and uh, it comes with xdebug extension. And the idea supports both xdebug and zendebugger for debugging purposes. So I use xdebug because uh, it's uh, more advanced in many, in many ways. So. Uh, I would encourage you to use it as well. And what we need to do first is to configure our PHP environment. That's basically has nothing to do with PHP Storm, uh, but still, uh, I'll just show how to do that. how to do that. So we go to php.ini for the respective for PHP interpreter you use, and you provide xdebug extension there. So just basically that's that extension, and you provide a path to xdebug.so, and you also provide the parameter xdebug remote enable. Um, to be one, and we start the server, and that's basically all the configuration from from the from the environment side. And from PHP Storm side, there are two ways, uh, two things we need to do. Uh, the first one is to find index dot. Uh, yeah, there is. Ah, yeah, that's here. Yeah, the first one is to file to find the file which you are going to debug. So uh, I'm going to debug just a basic uh, sandbox index dot php. And then uh, we set a breakpoint on the left gutter with this red, um, red, um, red round things. And uh, um, also we start listening for PHP debugging connection right here. 
so that it is waiting for the connection from the browser because the way debugger is working uh, for PHP is that there is, you need to uh, begin debugging session from the browser side and ID should listen or any kind of or any kind of other tool should listen uh, and be recipient for that. So uh, right here, I don't have my window, yeah. Here. So for Chrome, there is a special extension called uh, Xbox Helper, and uh, there are similar extensions for other browsers as well. Otherwise, you can just use uh, a special session key or cookie in order to tell the, the server to, uh, to begin the session. So in this case, we just use uh, this helper. It's installed from Chrome extension repository. Uh, it's a free one, so like nothing nothing stops us from using that. So uh, we selected that we want to debug this page. Then uh, we already have a breakpoint in PHP Storm and we already have for our PHP Storm listening for connections. So we just uh, reload our page. And uh, right now we got the debugger working in PHP Storm. So it got the connection, now it's connected to the debugger. And uh, you can just go through the code. So that's the easy thing, stepping term. So we are stepping, uh, stepping into every method, every class, and everything which is uh, run by PHP server right, right now. So we just go further and further. And uh, right now in the editor, you can see, maybe not, so I'll just zoom a bit. On the right, uh, that's basically a new feature that looks like a command, uh, but it's not a real command. It's a uh, its current value of, uh, of, uh, of the variable, uh, which is being executed by our debugger on the PHP server. So the thing is actually new in PHP Storm 9, and I'm using early access program of PHP Storm 9, which is also accessible on the website already. And for this one, we see uh, that we don't need really to um, add watches or evaluate our variables right here. We still can do that, and that's very convenient. Uh, but we can see in the editor everything what's going on with our variables and we can understand what has been run, what's the value, and all the rest. So we can go on and go on with this debugging and at some point you find the bug, you stop the debugger, you fix it, you run it again and check. So that's basically the way debugger works uh, in PHP Storm. And, and by the way, if you have some questions, just feel free to shout out at me and interrupt me. That's all right. I do not mind that. So. Um, then I think we'll move a bit to deployment. Uh, so one of the things supported by PHP Storm is uh, all kind of deployment of your application uh, from your local machine, developer machine, to, to your production or staging server. So SFTP, FTP, FTPS, and mountain folders and all the rest are supported. So what we have here is uh, configured, configured deployment server and uh, I have a mounted folder. Uh, here so that the process is just faster. So that works exactly the same way for SFTP, for example. You just provide all the credentials, all the links, and all the, uh, all the private key files, and web server URL, and you set up mappings, which is very, very, very important so that the markings are correct. So in my case, I have Netta deployed. So it's basically my application deployed to another mounted folder. I have mappings here so that uh, um, PHP Storm understands uh, where, where exactly it needs to deploy remotely. So there are no absolute paths, so that's it. And we have our server on the right here, and we have our local copy on the left. So we can, for example, uh, change something here. Yeah, let's do it. And then from the remote server, we can compare with local, with local version. And it will tell us that uh, this chunk of the code has been removed from, from the local from the local version, and there is a diff uh, yeah there is like proper diff file for all these uh, uh, remote and local versions, so we can understand should we deploy it or not. So probably we just broke it at our local machine. So we just go to the remote one and uh, uh, download from here. It's going to be written. That's it. So we got we got the file back on our local machine. If we broke something, that, that goes other way around as well. And also one of the new features coming in PHP Storm 9 is uh, remote edit. That's basically the one we we will ask most about 300 votes in our initial track or I think. So uh, 
you can now directly uh, edit file on the remote machine, so you don't need to have a uh, have a real copy on your machine. That's really uh, that's not recommend recommended way to do that. We don't really recommend ever to do anything on the production server. But apparently, that's very really popular workflow, as, as I would name it. So it's very, very popular workflow. For example, uh, when you have, I don't know, 100 projects, and you don't want to check out it from the remote server from FTP, because that's not that fast, uh, because network connection. So you can just open some configuration file. Um, it will be annotated in the name of the file that it's uh, uh, on the net uh, deployed server, so you can just uh, uh, you can just break it, and then we can either upload it to the remote server, or we can revert it, or we can again compare it with the last uploaded version. So we see the recidive. That's a property if, again similar to the one you have in version control system. But that might be handy if you want to make a quick hack to some kind of configuration or whatever. Uh, one more thing, which is really convenient. Uh, in terms of breaking things, is uh, the one named uh, is that local history. Um, I'm totally lost. Mm. Yeah, let's try to find it here. Um, Ah oh, yeah, right here. So we can show show local history for the file. And if you don't use a VCS, or for example, if you don't use version control, then sometimes you can break, break things. Well, everyone breaks things. That's all right. Uh, and if you don't have version control, at some point you can realize that you broke something a long time ago, a couple of weeks ago, and you really need this copy because you, you've done something really wrong. So in, in this case, you can see the local history for the file, that's a kind of a VCS, which is triggered every time you do something uh, something serious for any file in the ID. So for example, here I uploaded this file to remote server, so it's a new file. Here that was triggered by some of, some of the triggers when I was playing with the file, and this one on the download, and basically every time you um, do some serious change in the file, it will be shown in, in this local history for the file. And you can easily restore it to yeah to some uh, to some state, and you can create a patch which you can send to your friend and all the rest. So, if you break things, have a look at local history. That saved a lot of lives, especially when something is crashed, when uh, when the electricity is out or whatever. And if you remove the directory from your laptop with your project, so that also happens. We hear quite a lot about that. So yeah, local history, worth exploring. Uh, so one of the things uh, discussed, which is going to be discussed in today's meeting, is, is uh, mostly APIs. And uh, as my talk is not mostly about APIs, but mostly about tips and tricks, I have one very, very, very good thing uh, which you can use uh, developing your APIs. So that's uh, testing RESTful web services. Uh, that's a special client for. Uh, inside PHP Storm, so that you don't need to go anywhere, and through this client can be used to to connect to any kind of API. So you can provide method uh, of the connection, get post, boot, patch, and all the rest. You can you can specify requests, so what kind of caching, what uh, and authentication. For example, you can provide basic authentication token here. You can set parameters, and yeah, just set everything, and then we can run it. So in this case, I actually ah, I actually don't have internet, so that's quite understandable why it's not here. So yeah, I just connect to some page on the local host that can be, basically that can be any kind of page, that can be any kind of API. So we get the response, and there is this response that can be also played well. So for example, we can open it in in the browser, uh, if that would be JSON, we, we would be able to con uh, convert the viewer of uh, PHP Storm to JSON. But basically, you can switch all the formats, formats, uh, so that it sees what you are going to do. Then we can um, import requests, export requests, and provide 
uh, authorization he header, and we have some other HTTP proxy stuff. So uh, we can see all the response headers. So that's that's really good thing uh, when you work with APIs. So you don't need to switch anywhere to test it. And uh, also one more important thing that testing an API, you can also debug something. So well, basically your API would be our a file, PHP file on the back end. So on, on this file, you just uh, set a breakpoint at some point and you run uh, listening for PHP debugging connections. And then you connect to your API via REST client. And that's it. REST client will trigger debugger and you will be able to view everything which is going on in your code in debugger and you will be able to view everything which, which returned by REST service here in this REST client. So uh, going next, uh, one of one of good things about PHP Storm is that it's basically integrated development environment. So it includes a lot of tools which can be used or uh, complementary to to standard PHP coding or front end coding or whatever. And one of those things is basically our database support and SQL support. So uh, that's quite obvious that most of you, I think, use databases in order to. Uh, store data in your applications, and that can be SQLite, which is used, for example, in uh, in most of the examples here in in Net framework, and that can be MySQL, uh, which is the most popular one. And in PHP Storm, you can uh, create a proper a proper data sources uh, for all the drivers supported, but basically most of the drivers for most of their databases are here because I, you just need to have a JDBC driver and it's created for like most of database engines. So in this case for SQLite, I just provide a file and then select the schemes and tables, but basically for SQLite that doesn't matter much for for MySQL. That's a bit more complicated in this case, so I provide host port user password, I select uh, schemas and tables, so I mod, mod X and my SQL, for example, and that's it. I have uh, all my databases here. I also can have a proper console, so of course, let's provide you all the completion here, and I can run it, write an ID, I can get the response. Um, if I want, I, I can also Edit anything here. Yeah. So yeah, we get a new response. And uh, the most interesting thing is that you can use it in your PHP code as well. Well, let's break out a lot. So for example, we have some um, test query. Which is my, my SQL query and you would like to select something from the database. Right now, if you try to complete it, it's, uh, it says that there are no suggestions. And uh, right now, we can use uh, the, the thing named language injections. So that's basically injecting any kind of language inside the literal, for example, inside PHP literal. So we inject language, or we inject SQL, and, and we've got a code completion here. So we're going to select albums from something where something yeah and from here we can also with alt enter uh, we can run query in console this one most probably is not going to run because I was writing some nonsense uh, and also we can extract it uh, to yeah we can we can extract it to uh, another window, so we can edit all the all the SQL here, and it will reflect everything in our PHP code. So that's really convenient when you do some database queries right in your code, so that you can select proper proper dialect SQL, and you can write normally with all the code completion and all the rest. So uh, from here we'll be to, uh, we'll move a bit to, to the front end. So we go for some HTML file, for example from the API, and uh, basically everything which is provided for PHP for PHP uh, also works for like most of front end stuff. So for example uh, in HTML, well basically all the completion is here. Uh, 
you have all the standard tags. That's not that big deal. That all also works perfectly for JavaScript. Uh, but what I really like about uh, um, editing CSS, for example, is this thing. So we have a color picker here. And we can invoke it anytime we want to specify a color in CSS or or everywhere. So this one is quite quite handy, I would say. Um, yeah, so that's quite quite a hidden one, so probably you would like to explore that as well. Uh, so one of the things really convenient is uh, live templates. Probably you've heard about some of them. For example, our Emmet or Zen Coding. Yes, it, that used to be Zen Coding, and then they renamed it to Emmet. That's a set of uh, what we call live templates for HTML. And for example, we write div test style multiply by five. Press tab, and it creates us all this div 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 text here. And then we can uh, specify lorem 20 five times, and that generates us lorem ipsum five times. Uh, or we can lorem 100, 100 times. No, it's too big. <laughs> Let's do something more meaningful. Okay, yeah, 30 is okay. So yeah, you, you get the point. So. You can do pretty a lot of stuff here and with live templates, or uh, you can always edit them. Yeah, live templates. There are here for HTML, JavaScript, PHP, SQL, yeah, and all the Emmet stuff is here as well. So yeah, you just create some of the live, live templates. There is actually a very good repository on GitHub on Netta, like Netta specific live templates. Uh, somewhere on the GitHub, so you just can search that, and that's also a good one for some uh, specific functions and definitions. Uh, so yeah, from here I would move a bit to, to what's really new in PHP Storm 9, which is going to be released in a couple of weeks, in mid-June or close to end-June. So we are really close right now to, to the beta version, like we have our early access program, but we also have what's called public preview, or like stable beta, which is issued a couple of weeks before the stable release. Uh, so we're going to release it next week or like maybe in 10 days. Uh, so one of the things I already shown you is that debugger now annotates everything in the editor with values of the variables. That's the first one. Another one is uh, called postfix PHP code completion. So for example, if we start writing some construct like variable a is equal to one, two, three, and then we press uh, dot and uh, post annotated with if, and then we then we press tab, and entire construction has been turned to, to if statement. So that's called postfix PHP code completion, and we introduced that sometime for Java and JavaScript, and now we introduce similar concept for PHP. So basically, you can write some constructs, then you can apply some specific live templates, mostly about or if for you for which while and. Yeah, mostly about uh, this stuff. Uh, so it's quite convenient uh, and you can write your code much faster with this. Um, one more thing uh, we're working uh, from the last version is that you can run everything remotely. Uh, so we, with the last version we introduced Vagrant, which can be basically run right from the ID. So you need it in the, in the project route and uh, it generates a uh, vagrant file, yeah. So it generates a vagrant file, and you can edit it, and you can run the vagrant afterwards. And uh, for the last version, there is uh, a thing called in PHP remote interpreters, which means that you don't really need a local PHP installation uh, to work to work with PHP. So you can use your remote server in order to run PHP, in order to run your application, in order to use remote debugger and all the rest. So you can use it on Vagrant, on any kind of server, and yeah, whatever. But what we couldn't do in the previous version is work with uh, uh, some tools such as Code Sniffer uh, and Mess Detector remotely. So right now you can uh, define Code Sniffer and Mess Detector to work over uh, over SSH via PHP Remote Interpreter. 
so you just need to select by default for the interpreter and that will use your remote PHP interpreter. So that means you don't really need a local PHP configuration anymore. You can just use your server and that gets you closer to your production, production, production state uh, of the environment. So that's also very good with Vagrant so that you don't create your local configuration, your local uh, BLAM stack is not used and you just use something which is really similar to, to your production machine. So with, with this enhancement you basically uh, can move everything to the remote machine and yeah, that, that's a very good uh, way to use it right now with all the modern tools. Uh, so what's next? Um, yeah. Postfix completion, debugging, remote tools, speech because sniffer, mass detector, a lot of things around uh, type inference. We also introduced some of the support for PHP 7, which is going to be out in October, I think. But we all already provided some support for the parser, because there are some constructs in PHP 7 which can break things. So we don't want that, so we already supported that, but the full support will be coming later. Uh, so um, I think the last trick I would like to show you is uh, the one I was really surprised when I found out. So we have our, um, a normal terminal window here in PHP Store, and we, we can like, write anything here, and we can make a few tabs. That's the next tab, and then we can move this tab over here. So we have, uh, yeah, we have a proper terminal, right? In, PHP Storm right next to your files, so you don't really uh, need to switch to a smaller window. So I think that's mostly it uh, from the tips and tricks side. From me, so I would be really glad to hear your questions, sir, comments, and all the rest. We also have uh, great gifts from JetBrains to those asking the best questions. So you're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thanks a lot for holding that. <laughs> I hope you learn something new here as well. So, so questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> the first one, are you developing PHP Storm in IntelliJ IT? Yes, yes we do. <laughs> and yes, we do also develop IntelliJ IT in IntelliJ IT. Uh, <laughs> and yes, we actually can open it. <laughs> because, because normally in Eclipse, well, you hardly can open, open Eclipse in Eclipse. You need to disable some of, some of the modules, but you can open IntelliJ IT in IntelliJ IT. And you can open Eclipse in IntelliJ IT. So, <laughs> yes, we do that. So, and that's actually a very good thing about dog fooding uh, because we try to use our tools all the time. That's, that's how we try to emerge really fast because our IntelliJ idea started 15 years ago. Uh, that started with their tool name Renamer, like, like Java Renamer, that's basic refactoring, Rename refactoring for, for Java, and then they use that. And they also use IntelliJ all the time so that they, uh, they've done all the features, so all the developers do all the features they really need in everyday life. Uh, can I use PHP Storm with Microsoft SQL Server? Yes, yes you actually can because uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is a connector, Java connector for Microsoft SQL Server, so you can just uh, download it from the settings. So, yeah, as, as soon as you try to connect to Microsoft SQL Server and it can't find the connector, it will offer you to automatically download the connector and uh, yeah, and it just connects there. Uh, how long is local history kept? So is it possible to see all local changes ever made in the project? Uh, local history is kept uh, all the time you don't clean your caches. So basically, PHP Storm create a cache of the project at the first start. So uh, if you don't clean them, uh, there is a special action in file, file invalidate caches. 
then it will keep them for quite a long time. But sometimes uh, they are force uh, cleaned. That, that happens with a major version of date, for example, uh, because uh, the structure of caches uh, is changed and all caches can't be used anymore. So basically, uh, you, you can see for quite a while, uh, but we don't recommend it to use like exactly instead of version control, because at some point you probably uh, don't find your changes there anymore. So yeah, uh, there was also a question about uh, can I see all the changes to all the project? Uh, and let me just check that. That was about local history as well. Yes, so uh, if you if you go, I'll just steal it for a second. So the question was, can I can I see all the changes for entire project with local history? Uh, if you go to the project view and select for the top node, to the root, uh, local history and show history, then it will show you all the recorded events. So yeah, you can just go from file to file and it will show you uh, at every local history event what has happened. So yeah, you can do that. And we will get back to questions. Uh, what about hack support? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, hack support, it's probably coming uh, next week. Um, so currently we have our, our test implementation of hack support and we have a uh, connector for the xdebug already because they basically implemented xdebug in HHVM so that already works. Apparently that works only one time because there is a bug in HHVM which prevents you from running a uh, uh, debugger inside HHVM for the second time. You have to restart your HHVM. So <laughs> you actually can run it but only once. But for hack, uh, like syntax and type checks and all the rest, we have our test implementation, which is most probably uh, will be out in the next uh, access program build next week or whatever. Uh, though I, I would say that would, uh, the support will be pretty similar to the support uh, now provided in Emacs or VI Sublime Text by Facebook, because uh, we have to rely on the implementation of hack type checker in many ways, so we can't redo everything in PHP Storm, so we rely on uh, stuff done by Facebook team. Uh, can REST clients have queries for project? Mm. I actually need clarification uh, on what do you mean by saving queries to project? Uh, what kind of queries? And yeah, so. Uh, queries for server. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I see. So the problem is that, uh, yeah, currently history for the REST client it's uh, stored in memory. It's not stored in caches. So uh, the history of uh, REST connections will be lost when you reset your uh, restart your IDE. Uh, currently, it's not possible to do that. But I encourage you to go to the issue tracker and report it. Most probably, it's already there in IntelliJ ID or issue tracker. So just check it there uh, and vote for this feature. So yeah, that, that's your work because that's really helpful. And uh, there was a question, another one. Yeah, Cassandra, can PHP Storm connect to Cassandra? Um, let's check that. Uh, and I still do I have an internet, just a second. Here we go. Let's 
So basically what, what I try to clarify is is there a JDBC connector for Cassandra? Yes, and there is a GDPC compliant driver for Cassandra using SQL. And yes, in this case, you, you actually can because uh, you can use any GDPC connector, GDPC driver. You just uh, plug in it, plug in it in, in the ID if it can find it by default. And yes, in this case, you, you can connect that. If it doesn't work with this driver, you would better report your issue tracker as well because probably there is some incompatibility with this GDPC driver. As, as far as I know, that's not really a standard one, so it's quite a new one and a not a standard one, so probably some tweaking from our side is needed as well. When will CLine have support for Makefile? Uh, that's a very hard question for me because uh, I'm not that much involved in CLine, and uh, let's try to check. Because as far as I remember, they made some announcement about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, next one is a good one. <laughs> so, uh, first, uh... <laughs> so, yeah, there is not yet information about when exactly Shiline is going to make, make files available, but most probably this year. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure 100%, but uh, most probably quite soon because, well, that's a popular one. So then now we're in the release version, so CLIM is released and you can buy it. So yeah, soon please add it and make sure to go to the issue tracker and, and vote for it. And now getting to what's the main advantage here of PHP Storm against... <laughs> that was... Uh, the previous one was since to you, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, PS bad. <laughs> yes, that? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> against PSPAD, or uh, I would say that would be mostly about in intelligence of understanding the code and the way that you can normally work with debugger and all the tools and all the rest. So uh, that's different different type of the software, I would say. So that's much more solid and uh, compatible for like really big, big projects. So, um, yeah, but if you want to discuss something specific about this, but we can do that over here later. And so goes to, uh, that was, yeah, another one was about Zen Studio. Uh, well, Zen Studio is basically Eclipse PDT with some plugins and stuff done by Zen Studio team. Uh, there are a few things, sir, we really got from Eclipse. It's not the performance is not very good. So there are some problems sir, with the performance in Eclipse platform in general. And also some of the plugins are not uh, uh, same by user experience and user interface. So sometimes it's really hard to use that. And there might be a few different plugins which you don't understand how, how which one of them actually works. So then still you got to some of those problems and also uh, if we like compare the products, or PHP Storm is evolving faster in many ways. But uh, if I would answer this question, I would actually uh, wouldn't do some specific comparison because uh, that's not fair. Because I'm a bit biased uh, from the JetBrains side, and I would uh, just refer to the statistics made by SidePoint or Magazine last year, and they stated that PHP Storm got a market share of 50, uh, 40 40 percent. Uh, of their PHP developers market, PHP IDs and editors, and that studio got about five or ten. So that would be, I think, fair answer from their external external source. Uh, there was yeah question about increasing RAM used by PHP Storm. Yes, it's possible. Uh, you need to well actually, if you run out of RAM, uh, it will offer you to to increase RAM. Uh, 
dedicated to this virtual machine. But you can, you can just Google it, how to increase RAM in PHP Storm, and there will be an article from our support department, which explains uh, that you need to go, if I'm not mistaken, to idea.properties file, and you need to specify a specific uh, um, size of, of the RAM dedicated to virtual machine running PHP Storm. So yes, it's possible. Yes, it, it, it actually helps on very big projects if you're running out of RAM. Uh, is there any way to expand expand size of uh, queries history for uh, expand size of queries uh, history? I don't really understand the question. Could you please elaborate? Uh, every time you run SQL queries in HP Store, uh, this queries is saved to history and you can really run to this history. But this history yeah. is really really small. Yeah, that will be the same case with REST client. You need to go to the issue tracker, find the relevant issue. I believe that's there, and you need to vote for this one. Yeah, it's not yet possible right now. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So there were uh, many questions. Thanks uh, a lot to you about that, uh, for those. Uh, we have three, three GIFs uh, for, for the best questions. So uh, I think the first one goes to uh, be a spat question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Another one uh, goes to um, the one about no, not Zen Studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, another one is going to Cassandra. Thank you. And and the last one and the last one. And the last one is going to local history for entire project because I didn't know that and I had to look up it in the ID. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank thanks you. everyone. Nice, nice to be here. Thank you.